Romans chapter uh, 15. Romans chapter 15 and verse 4. And uh, one more passage of scripture. It's found in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And uh, verse 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 11. I'd like you to get those three passages of scripture. And if you would, stand with me at the reading of the word of God. John chapter 4, starting in verse 9, the Bible said, Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked him, and he would give thee living water. And the woman saith unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep, and from whence then hast thou this that living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well, and drank thereof himself, and his children, and his cattle? And Jesus answered and said unto her, Whatsoever drinketh, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whoso drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well uh, of water springing up into everlasting life. The woman saith unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come thither to draw. Jesus saith unto her, Go call thy husband, and come hither. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband, for thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou now hast is not thy husband, and that saidest thou truly. The woman saith unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet in Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship, ye know not what. Ye, we know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh, and now is, when, true, when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Can you say amen? amen. We could. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you today for the opportunity that it is to be thine. Lord, to be able to come before you now. We pray, Lord, that the word of God would be opened up by the Spirit. God, that you would, Lord, break the seal and cause us to understand Lord, remove any blindness, Lord. Remove God any, Lord, God, lack of understanding right now in us. Lord, remove all confusion, God. And Lord, give us clear vision. You said without a vision, the people perish, God. Remove anything, God, in heaven, Lord, that would hinder that sight and give us that clear, single vision, God. And Lord, we pray, God, we'll give you praise and glory. Anoint our eyes and our ears and our hearts to receive the word of God. Lord, we need the Holy Ghost, Lord. Make my tongue, Lord, and Lord, the lips of my mouth as the pen of a ready writer. And Lord, I pray, speak God clearly. God, help us to understand the Word of God. We need you, Holy Ghost. God, we're cripples without you, God. Lord, we lean upon you today. God, you said without you we can do nothing. And Lord, we look to your Spirit this morning. Oh, hallelujah to God, Lord. Help us, Holy Ghost. God, speak the Word, God. Lord, that thy servants might hear and give you glory. In the name of Jesus, we'll give you praise for all that you do, Father. We ask these things now in Christ's name. And all God's children said, Amen. If you would, uh, you can be seated. I'd like to read two more passages of Scripture. So keep your fingers where I told you. Uh, but we notice, you have to notice something here. That Jesus went about uh, 60 miles outside uh, of the regular route, that he went a route that normal Jews did not go through. He, they did not walk this route. But Jesus was willing to walk this route out of his way to make a trip to this little lady. And uh, I believe the main reason that he made the trip in the first place is because of the question that she asked after that she perceived he was a prophet. <clears throat> but she was about her normal duties. She was doing her normal things, but there was a question upon her heart, where does 
does true worship take place? She had questions because of her upbringing, and she had ideas and, and ideologies that had been placed and had been taught to her from her upbringing, from her family and friends and the people that she had grown up with, from the Samaritan people. Uh, but she still had that question, that gnawing on the inside, that she really wanted to know the truth. Where does true worship take place? Where does the service of God really occur? And, uh, you know, I, I, there's been times when I've had spiritual questions and I've asked different ones, I've gone to different ones, and they gave me an answer, but it just didn't solve the gnawing on the inside of me. It just didn't satisfy me. And so that gnawing continued, and that, amen, wondering continued, and that uh, uncertainty was still within my soul. And that's the way it is until God gives us the true answer. Until we are really faced with the truth, we just have this uh, unsatiable desire to know the truth. And the only one that can fill it is God. I don't care how good the theologian is. I don't care how good the orator is. The only thing that will satisfy the human soul is the truth. God has a God-shaped void on the inside of you that he has formed and created for himself. And there is only one that can satisfy it. Thank you, Holy Ghost. <clears throat> now, real quickly, I wasn't planning on going this deep into the scripture, but I, I feel like the Holy Ghost wants me to give a little history. The Samaritans were not like Jews. What had taken place is they were, uh, they replaced the Israelites. Uh, the Israelites, that being, after that, the two kingdoms were divided. Uh, when Jeroboam took the ten kingdoms and uh, Rehoboam took the two kingdoms, when Israel was carried away because of idolatry and because of their uh, lack of rigidity to the word of God, uh, they left their inheritance and they were carried away by the Assyrians and later of course the Babylonians came and carried away Judah because of their lack of adherence uh, to the covenant and heal, uh, yielding their wills to God amen but they began to uh, also lose sight of who God was amen and of what God had given them there at Sinai and what had taken place is that uh, after that the Jews or the Israelites moved out that those ten tribes were taken out they had to replace that area. And uh, so some of the Assyrians and some of the other nations moved into that area. And that's exactly what takes place. Anytime someone moves out, someone else moves in. And the people that moved in were from other nations. And they didn't know the God of Israel. And the Bible said, amen, that God began to send lions among them because they did not know the God of the land. And so they inquired, amen, of the king, uh, amen, that had conquered that land, and they asked them to send them a priest that would come and tell them the truth and tell them about the God of the land. They didn't believe that he was the God of all the earth, but the God of that area. And so they came, and the Samaritans' religion, amen, was formed from that priest. He came. And he taught them about the God of Israel. But, amen, he did not teach them that there was, amen, that God desired worship. And only him were they to worship. Amen. And so the scripture says they went to the synagogues and they feared the Lord and they served their own God. That's a whole other message. But the Samaritans were a mixture. They were a mixture of Jews and Israelites. They, had half, they were half free. Amen. They were not the pure thing, but they were a mixture, amen, of the cultures of the world and the culture of the Jews. And so they had a, uh, a mixed drink, you might say, religion. <coughs> and that'll preach. Amen. Because that's what we got today. Amen. You can go out here in this world and somebody preaches it this way and somebody preaches it that way. Amen. And, and, and it sounds right. It seems right. Amen. But it doesn't line up with the true scriptures. And this Samaritan woman was not satisfied with her physicians. 
She was not satisfied with her theologians and with her teachers of religion. And so she had this desire on the inside. And as she made that journey, Jesus knew it. Amen. I believe as he woke up and talked with the Father that morning, God told him to make that journey across the desert. And as he went and he sat down by that well, his disciples were wondering, why in the world are you sitting down at this well? This is where Samaritans come. And that woman came and as she began to draw water, Jesus began to converse with her. And the disciples were wondering, why in the world is he conversing with this woman? We can see what kind of woman she is. She don't look anything like a Jew. But Jesus knew her inner desire. Thank God God knows our inner desires. He knows what we really need. And he knows what we really want. And he looked past all of that outside. And saw her need. And the question was made. You know Jesus. Began to speak to her. And told her. You know they begin to converse about the well. And Jesus used that natural subject. To talk about a spiritual matter. Amen. He used something very natural. To teach us a spiritual application. Amen. The things of this world cannot satisfy us. As much, amen, as we feel like they'll satisfy us for the moment in the long run, amen, after that we partake, they will leave us thirsty, amen, and we will need something else to satisfy us. But Jesus went on and said, I've got something that will satisfy you, and you'll never thirst again. You'll never have a question whether or not it's right. You'll never have a question whether or not, amen, it's settled in your soul, amen, if it's really right or, or if it's really not, if it's truth or error, you'll know, hallelujah to God, beyond a shadow of a doubt, what is right. Woo, I feel the Holy Ghost. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. <laughs> Woo! Elamo coach. Hallelujah to God. <clears throat> and she said, You give me all that. I want some of that water. I don't ever have to come to this well again. She, she was not quite understanding. She thought it was going to be a natural fix. But Jesus didn't want to fix her natural. He wanted to fix her supernatural. David said, fix my heart, oh God. Hallelujah. And that's where we need to fix it is on the inside. Amen. You can fix the outside all you want. Yeah. You can change the clothes. You can change the, amen, the, uh, the, 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 uh, uh, the housing situation, the car situation. You can change spouses. She had done that five times and it had not satisfied that inner longing, uh, that inner desire that only one could satisfy, that only one could fulfill, that only one. Amen. Glory to God could meet that need. She had been searching. She had gone from one husband to another husband, from one position to another position. Amen. Trying to find the truth. But Jesus comes to where we are. Hallelujah to God. If we really want to know the truth, God will send the truth to us. If we really want to know what's right, God will send it our way. Hallelujah. Well, praise God. If we don't want to believe a lie and be dead, we don't have to be because God will send the truth to those that desire it. Mm. 